Welcome to our crazy Get a Real Estate Life. You did not get to meet the man behind all of the transformations on houses, and uh, we're lucky to have him. This is Jay, and uh, Jay is the one who, um, you know, I call him the, the house healer because he can go in and really diagnose a house and figure out where the problems have been and uh, make a complete and total transformation, just like he did here with this one. So I can't wait to kind of show you around and see because today's a special day. It's closing day. So uh, Jay, um, one of the things that you really like to do whenever you heal a house, and uh, you know that's my term just because y'all, he can really go in and go, oh, I see what happened here. Oh, they thought this was gonna be smart. Oh, somebody did this. And he puts all the puzzle pieces of the puzzle together um, uh, concerning problems of a house and just knows how to go in and um, repair those things. A lot of times when you see flip houses, you won't see that level. You'll just see, you know, flooring put down, you'll see paint smacked on the walls and somebody calls it a good job. Um, it's not the case when you get to work with Jay. So tell us a little bit about this house here at Hunter Hills. So this house was in great shape when we got it. Someone could have moved into it right away. It was just still stuck in 1999. Uh, so we updated everything in it, modern colors, uh, got all the polished brass out, all new floors, put a modern looking fireplace and mantle, um, and then corrected the major problems that we knew of with the house, which was some drainage issues around the house, um, some lighting issues inside the house that they had been living with for, I guess, for decades. Well, and also, though, there were some roof issues, previous roof issues that had been fixed, and that was scaring people off when it was previously on the market, and they really just couldn't get a lot of traction. Now, here's another thing, like, from the marketing standpoint of it, and uh, when people ask me all the time, how do you find these properties that you know he can go in and fix? And... Um, I do love it, but there are just signs. After doing this for so long, you just see things. And here's a couple of tips for people. There was a twin bed in the master bedroom, okay? That tells me these people really need to sell the house for a reason. Um, otherwise, you're normally gonna see a queen size bed or a king size bed in the um, primary bedroom. So that is a sign, that's kind of a little tip off. Another tip off is, um, there's a finished basement here that didn't get included in the square footage. So I knew there was a whole lot of extra value there. I just needed to make sure he put his eyes on it, that he could see it too and verify and that we could confirm that together. And bingo, that was the jackpot. And that is not criticism to the previous listing agent. That um, happens all the time. Um, that's why we always make sure, he comes with me whenever I put a house um, on the market a lot of times to measure it so we know exactly because tax records will totally mislead you. They're not always correct. And um, uh, pricing a house for the market is so sensitive to how many finished square feet is in a house. So um, I kind of want to just give that background. Um, another tip was that people were super scared by things that needed to be done here because of previous um, roof links. Um, and uh, it, he was able to analyze that, figure out what to do with it, repair it, and make sure that um, people who get to move in today don't have that same issue that they previously had. So, um, and again, the other um, thing about what he said was it was all, you know, in the 90s. People want fresh today. They want the latest trends. They want the latest, greatest at all price ranges. And buyers today don't have the time and they don't have the bandwidth to do projects on their own. So having that vision, I mean, we are so instant gratification. We're so Pinterest, right? Every time you do a job, right? Mm -hmm. It all starts with... Everybody's got a load of pictures they want to duplicate. <laughs> so um, it's harder for especially a first-time home buyer in a price range like this to be able to see what the finished product would be when all they see are things from 1990s, maybe house that they uh, used to live in with their parents and they're like, oh, we would never live there. It would take us a fortune to fix that up. 
So these are just some signs that I look for. Um, and then I kind of knew the backstory from uh, an agent that I worked with that had a contract on this house. And she actually is um, uh, went to work with a different company. So once that happened and she wasn't a colleague of mine anymore, I knew we would be able to come in and make an offer on this. And she is an awesome person, love her. And um, it just ended up working out like that. So Jay, tell us about this special touch. So I have these mantles cut from a sawmill, which is just a few miles from here, and he cuts oak and pine and pretty much anything I ask for. And I just get them to cut them and I keep them uh, in my basement until they're ready to install. And I have, we just distress them and make them look, give them a little character. It's something that um, you won't find in many houses because this is custom one-of-a-kind thing. And uh, he put so much love and passion in this. Um, this is really kind of those favorite things because he can escape, go down where no one's bothering him and uh, do this on his own. And while he's doing it, he's thinking out how to heal the rest of the house. So <laughs> let's take a look at um, some of the other features we have here. So I know all the answers to all the questions, but you know I want everyone to know you and your talent, who you are, the role that you play. Um, we know that you are a home builder, right? He's he's a home builder. Um, tell us a little bit more about what you love about flipping and how long you've been doing it. So Jenny and I probably flipped our first house in around 1995, and we lived in it and worked on it and don't think we ever had a real kitchen in it till the day we moved out. Well, you know, so. um, I have a saying that ki the kitchen is such a waste of square footage for me. <laughs> <laughs> and if we proved it in that house. We lived in like one bedroom where we had everything in it. <laughs> and pretty much when we buy, would buy a house for ourselves, we always looked at reselling it and not living there. So we were looking at opportunities to make it better add value and move on um we're in our 16th house now i think maybe 17th but um we've moved a lot because that's what you do right when you're in the business and we've been in the business for so long but um our last house we lived in for 12 years mm -hmm. the longest ever yeah, that's because he made me. <laughs> because our kids needed to get out of high school. <laughs> we let them have a stable life. <laughs> so we hadn't always been focused on flipping. Um, the majority of my life I've been building new houses, and we've just flipped stuff as they came to us, um, one or two a year or none a year, and a, you know, just however they came. But... Mm -hmm over the past two to three years when building became more difficult because of pricing and labor problems, we started focusing on flipping when uh, we have more control over what goes on with the house and can make our own decisions and, and work with what's available and who's available. It had gotten so difficult with the changing prices in lumber and uh, the appliances and cabinets and everything coming in. It was costing so much to build a house and 
normally he likes to work with the consumer at the very tail end, but when you drag all of that out, you're paying interest on everything that you're doing. And uh, it just got to be too much of a headache, so we just changed focus and said, all right, let's do as many flips as we possibly can. And we're just so grateful that we have such a community, such a network of agents that know when they have a house that's super hard to sell, or maybe there's a hoarder that is living there. And I'm not saying this to make fun of anyone but that is a huge situation um, as a listing agent we see that situation a lot and we're here to help we don't make anyone feel um, ashamed by their situation and like Jay says look don't even sweep it don't pack a thing you can just leave all your trash in it just walk out and he'll take care of everything else and make it really easy on the person and lighten that burden um, and then he heals it and uh, makes it fresh for the next person to come in so um, I think that you get a lot of joy and satisfaction on bringing houses back to life I like to give them a new life and put a new family in them we get calls all the time from people that uh, just can't, don't have the wherewithal to get their house ready to sell, or agents that want to sell it and they just, the people can't make it happen um, because it's packed full of junk, because it's super neglected, uh, or they don't have the money to, to get it ready to put on the open market. And we look at probably a house a week in that situation. That, so we're lucky to have the network of agents calling us for those. Yes, we are, um, because there are just so many off-market opportunities and sales that happen behind the scenes that people just don't really know about, um, but that's our jobs. Um, our job is to get out there and um, you know, help people find solutions for their situations um, when it comes to getting their houses sold. Sometimes it could be an estate and people just can't, uh, uh, they might live in a, um, two, three states away and they don't even know how to to help you know, the previous um, parent that may have passed away um, house to get in good shape in order to um, get it sold on the open market. And there are just some properties that won't sell on the open market because of the conditions that they're in. Um, uh, so we take care of all that. Now as listing agent, um, my job is to get you the highest possible price. And you know what? I just love to push those limits. And uh, we really push the limits here. Um, this one is bringing a, um, a top of the line price, but we knew we could get it and I could justify it. So it's not that we are ripping anyone off and it did appraise. Um, I just go in and analyze that data. And again, it's using that additional square footage that was missed on the previous listing and maximizing that um, as much as we possibly can. But then he knows that he can't spend over a certain amount when I tell him, hey, the most we're gonna be able to get is this, and that's pushing the limit. So he's gotta know to stay in his budget, so it's a win-win for all parties. The square footage was, was listed wrong, so it didn't seem right. The, in the basement, there were some incomplete things. The ceilings were incomplete. Somebody had started them and never finished it, but they still used the space. But it looked unfinished. Um, when you come in the front door, the stairs were covered with carpet. This was all carpet. Well, it looked terrible because it was 20 years old and people had been walking on it. And it had stains on the ceiling from a previous roof leak or several previous roof leaks. It had been fixed, but this, the stain had never been fixed. So in, in a purchaser's mind, they were still problems. Um, it just There's a lot of things like that here that the house was not neglected, but it just didn't present well at all. Right, um, so we fix that. We know how to um, present better. Um, as far as being a listing agent, how I said I like to like, you know, really push those limits on prices because I feel like it's my duty, especially to him, right? Because he's my number one repeat client. <laughs> Um, it's my duty to get my client as much as I possibly can. And that comes from prepping the house before it even goes on the market. You can't just throw something out there and get the highest possible price. Um, Jay's recently helped me um, uh, help my sellers get one property ready that, you know, it took what, about $11,000? took about $11,000 to really get this house that the people have lived in um, 
22 years they bought it brand new and y'all people live in a house and things happen and you don't think about repairing or maintaining things if there, it's not an issue, right? So um, we had to go in there and totally freshen it up. But let me tell you the results of that. It's painful in the beginning because of the checks that you might have to write, um, the cleaning that you might have to do, the, the moving um, of items that you might have to do, and the anxiety around it and just hoping it's gonna pay off. Well, I've got that house under contract for $45,000 more than a house exactly in um, the neighborhood that's probably even a tiny bit bigger, okay? That's why you do it. And that's the difference I think that we bring to the table um, whenever we're helping people. Um, we really um, look at your money um, like it's ours and it's super important to us. Um, so, and we kind of, we, we've done this so many times we know what's going to work, um, even when people might feel a little bit anxious at front, like, oh, God, I'm going to lose everything. I'm spending, I'm wasting this $11,000, right? <laughs> and if without the right direction, you can waste $11,000 and, and spend it on something that, that doesn't help the house sell at all or add any value. Or get through a home inspection, because also in today's market, we've had just a slight shift um, what people are doing, they're getting terrified by the home inspection when a couple of months ago, nobody was even getting home inspections. We personally want you to have a home inspection. We want you to feel confident that you're buying something that you're gonna love and uh, get through those items. Know exactly what it is that you are buying and we're seeing a lot of people back out or use it to negotiate um, better prices right now. Um, that's back in style. That's trending December 2022. <laughs> so you can see that um, Jay is the operations side of our um, Get a Real Estate Life um, crazy business um, and operations is his thing on all parts of it where it comes from sales or prepping a house or getting through a home inspection or um, helping set up for Airbnb and support Supporting Jacob in that um, uh, he is extremely um, important but he thinks things through more so than maybe I do I might think of an idea and I'm on it and going and not thinking about all the right steps he thinks it out um, in a beautiful process and then he takes action and it just ends up going really well so we're grateful to have this guy as part of our team